Hey, hey, hey. Hope everybody's doing good. Carol Bryan coming at you with my boy Kenya Pat. Kenya Pat, are you there, buddy? I'm here. Can you hear me? I can, buddy. What's happening, man? What's happening in sunny Kenya today? Well, I'll tell you, yesterday I was out playing golf and Mark says, turn around, look. And I turn around, there's monkeys around my golf bag. <laughs> So, had to scare them off. It's pretty fun. Just I thought, it's so it's so exotic. It's just like so fun to be here. So, are the monk like? I'm gonna ask a very stupid question, so ignore the ignorance. But like, the monkeys is this a concern in any way? These guys gonna come and attack you, or you'll get? No, 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 not at all. Um, even you know, I grew up um, when I was. Okay, quick story, Africa story. When I was uh, age nine to 13, I grew up in Zimbabwe <clears throat> and we used to go running around all the time up in the hills, the mountains. We lived in an area where um, just outside the city, there was the largest concentration of leopards in the world at 30 leopards in this like uh, 20 mile radius. Never saw one once in three years. Um, but I was chased by a whole troop of baboons. Uh, and I had to run into a lake to get away. So like a hundred baboons. Imagine um, Doberman pinchers with four hands. That's what these things coming at you is like frightening for a 10 year old. Um, anyway, um, so there's baboons on the golf course too and they just totally leave you alone. They don't care. You know, they're just out looking for nuts or something. So yeah, it's a little, a little nerve wracking. It uh, keeps you on the edge of your game. <laughs> Yeah, no doubt. I love it. When you're, Very I'll, cool. We'll uh, take you out and we'll uh, give you the full experience. I know. I know. Actually, well, you know, I went, um, I took my eight year old daughter. We went um, mountain biking for Father's Day weekend. And holy cow, did I have fun, by the way. I was channeling my BMX, 14 year old KB BMX kid anyways and oh my god i had so much fun i literally ran into a tree and i'm not kidding and i'm talking a huge tree and i get a picture of my bike anyways it could have been very very ugly luckily for me i just a little bit bumped and bruised and significantly more cautious afterwards i was getting a bit I was getting a bit confident but anyways when we were on the chairlift we saw a black bear and it was a big bastard like I'm going to say, I don't know, hundreds, it was hundreds of pounds. It was freaking huge. So anyways, there, there you go. So we saw a black bear. So it's not a giraffe, it's not a lion, it's not quite as cool, but, but we, were, we were biking with a black, black bear. bear. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's like, oh, oh my God, could you imagine? You'd be, you'd be dinner in a hurry. But anyways, lots of black bears where we live here, folks. Anyways, anyways, there we go. Lots of stories. We're not here to there talk about wildlife. We're here to talk about profit acceleration software. Um, so if you guys have a question, um, you got to either just raise your hand or pump a question in the box. We will read it out. If we don't have any questions, we're going to have ourselves a quick call because Pat and I have about 2 million things to be doing right now including some new software that is going to be launched. We keep talking about it. We promise it's going to be coming. <laughs> Seven-month project is about to be unleashed, but it's coming. It's coming. So in the meantime, I'm going to open up a couple of folks. In fact, Mark Kudre. Mark, we're coming for you, buddy. This guy's a heavyweight. Leave. Mark. I'm here. How you doing, buddy? What's happening? <clears throat> Living life, man. It's super busy. That's good to hear. Hey, do I have this right? Do you have a two hundred thousand dollar coaching program? Do I have a two hundred thousand dollar coaching program? Yeah. I've had two hundred thousand dollar months. Yeah. Okay. No, but you don't have a two hundred. Okay, I get you. Okay, that's cool. Um, I don't have a program that I sell for two hundred. Okay, I thought you did. Okay. Apologies, Paul. I was thinking you did. Somebody with a very similar last name to you, which I'm going to try and work it out right now. Anyways, that's cool. So $200,000 a month. Well, that's good. That's good. Walk us through that. How'd you manage to do 200 grand a uh, 
Well, and two hundred grand a month. A lot of it came out of COVID. Uh, during COVID, every day I was developing a, a LinkedIn outreach program with a VA, VA's help, and I was targeting business owners, partners, founders, CEOs of one million to ten million dollar companies, and so. the outreach content was. Uh, business owner to business owner, I'd like to connect and have a short conversation with you to find out how COVID is affecting your industry and your geographic region uh, so that it will help me as a business coach to gain a better understanding of the scope of this disruption. I've been asking oh, no. this of business owners all yeah. over the country, and I'm happy to share my results. Nothing to share, I mean, nothing to, to sell, nothing to pitch. And from that, I was getting between five and 10 conversations a day for a total of over 500. And from that, uh, the conversations naturally led to our business is going to be completely different. How are we going to deal with this? And that rolled into the uh, coaching programs. Boom. There we go. Holy cow. That, so that, this has just been over the last 12 months then? Yes. Obviously, I, wow. I mean, I had a really, I had a really good coaching program before that. I was, I was not, but not to that scale. I was doing between four hundred and five hundred and fifty thousand a year just by myself. I don't have any office staff or anybody to help me at this point. So, um, you know, that was the max that that I'd done on an annual basis, and I wanted to see how far I could go on a singular, singular production, and that was my May. Or my March uh, 2021, March 2021 was 238,000. So that to me is about the max that I want to go. I, that was actually close to actual work. Uh, so now I've been scaling things back, and and uh, the reason I got involved with uh, LPW is because the profit acceleration software and the business academy solves a huge part of the heavy lifting that I've been currently doing. I've got my own assessments and my own approach, but uh, this just makes it so much better. And I'm still working through profit acceleration software, uh, but I've got about 14 or 15 um, companies that were in the process of developing their profiles and their blueprints moving forward. Love it. What kind of businesses are you? Um, what kind of businesses are you approaching with this? Uh, primarily COVID script. Primarily uh, printing companies and manufacturing, because that's that's my background. Printing and manufacturing. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. And when you say printing, all are foreign. you talking? So, all foreign. Yeah. So wide format, digital, variable data, specialty graphics. Um, essentially, we're, I've developed a, a, success, a uh, history of success uh, has been in helping traditional legacy lithographic companies transition into the digital economy. And that includes all of the things that are in um, the coaching academy. Uh, I'm already teaching them how to use landing pages, how to deal with long-term search SEO, um, how to find their best ideal customer profile. I go a lot deeper into ideal customer profile and um, developing the latent value of their existing customer base. Um, I've developed some algorithms that are really accurate and having run it now on 300 companies, the latent value of their existing customer base is almost always equal to the current revenue. So this gives us an enormous opportunity to shed the weak and poor fit customers that are driving top line and focus only on maximizing the potential of their ideal customers. I want you to say that last bit again with the, the matching of the current revenue. Say that right. again for me, would you please? So, so essentially, every company that I've looked at, and I, I yep. use 80-20 principle on steroids. So okay. what I do is I don't use 80-20 the way 
most people do. I use it as 7525. And the reason that I do that is that the top 5% of the, of the 80% have the potential to migrate into the top 20%. Everybody else is going to stay in the lower quartiles, the lower area. And when we analyzed 300 companies, what we found was that the total revenue contributed by the lower 75% was somewhere between about 9% and 13% of top line revenue, but it accounted for almost 75% of their time. So by shedding 11% of your sales to get 75% of your time, you can massively over deliver to the top 25%. And this is where you can yeah. explode the potential of that top 25. The other thing that people don't realize is that the revenue earning of the average of the top 25% is four to five times that of the lower 75%. So they have much, much more potential to, to grow on a, on a larger scale with much more profitability. So then I, I wanna make sure everybody took that away as I, I think what you just said is a rather than do 80, 20, um, you do believe that 20% of their clients will generate 80% of their revenue. But what you said is there's an X, there's a 5% that fall out of the 20 that can move into the 20 and represent more than 80%. Like you can move the, you go 75 instead of 80 because there's 5% there that can be moved in and it's a mistake to poo poo them. Yes. Because in the reason. The the reason for that, Carl, is that a, a large majority of those are still developing their trust and credibility certification of you as a vendor. So yeah, they're giving you smaller orders, but once you prove yourself, then the, the floodgates open and the orders start to flow. Got it. I love it. Um, so you go eight so that and then so if i were so the, how much of these guys for what you do you got some heavyweight what, what's your pricing model how much do you charge to do all this so i've got a very interesting pricing model so i i base my first model on a very simple formula you give me a dollar i'm going to give you ten dollars of new revenue year over year in return nah, yeah, yeah. how many times do you want to do that with me <laughs> it's a good question. I like it. It's a trick question, but it's it goes deeper than that. So just answer what you would normally answer. How many times do you want to do that with me? Uh, over how many times are we willing to do it? Let's keep doing it. My next question: What are you going to do when you get tired of handing me one dollar bills? What am I going to say? I'm going to say, I'm not sure. What do your other guys do? <laughs> they 90, get tired of sitting here. 98% of the people will say exactly what you said. I don't know. Is, they get this deer in the headlight look. And then the, yeah. next thing, the next thing that I say will change our business relationship forever. Which is what, what, have, I, what have I been handing you back? Say it again. What, what is the question? The, the question that I'm going to ask you will change our business relationship forever moving forward. And the yeah. question is, what have I been handing you back? $10. How about you give me $10 and I give you $100? How many times are you going to do that with me? Yeah, I'm going to have some money at a discount. I'm going to say, well, look, how do we start? What's the minimum? The answer is one time because the next dollar, the next exchange is going to be a hundred dollars to get a thousand dollars. It's a 10 X relationship. And so when people begin to understand that right away, you've just completely destroyed the RFP proposal quotation. Give me a proposal thing because they realize that everything that I do is based on an ROI. And the question now becomes, what is the most expensive thing that you can sell to me? Because I, and what's the ROI going to be on that? And if you've done your homework and you know, and you can deliver the results, they're going to be 
banging on your door to do as much business with you as you can. Yep. Okay, but that in theory, we all, I get it. Now close it's, me. It's absolutely. What's my minimum? How much? What am I? I'm going to give you my credit card number. What are you hitting it for to get started? So here's the thing. Everybody says, I want to do this right away. And my response is, listen, I only work with the top 20%. You have to prove to me that you're capable of getting into my coaching program. So my accelerator program is $7,500 for eight weeks. And in that week, eight weeks, I'm expecting to see a return of new year over year business from you of 60,000 to $75,000. To get into this program and to get into coaching, you have to demonstrate to me that you're teachable, that you're coachable, that you can take the action that's prescribed and that you get the results that the actions are described for. If you do that, then we can move into the coaching program and in the coaching program, the focus moves from top line focus to bottom line focus. And that's the point at which things really take off. So my bottom line programs are 25,000, 35,000 and 50,000 a year with a with a percent uh, revenue split after a 10 to 1 return. So walk us through so close me again. So it, I've gone through I, I I'm like 7500 bucks. How do I pay for that? You tell me. How do I pay for the 7500? Do you take my credit card and hit it? You give me three a payment plan of three months. What does that look like? I can I can do it I can do it either way. I can do a single payment, which is sixty eight hundred, or I can do three payments uh, of twenty five hundred, which is seventy five hundred. So twenty five hundred today, twenty five hundred in thirty days, twenty five hundred in in uh, two months. And during that period, you you will have generated all the money to get to pay for the program and additional profit in your pocket and enough money to get you going on the coaching program. Yep. So self-funding, you're gonna self-fund it, but you have to believe in yourself and you have to believe in the program. And I've had enough people through the program. I've got tons of people that are, that are testimonials. I said, look, I'm gonna give you their phone numbers. You can call them up, you can ask them anything. Ask them the hardest question that you could ever think to ask them, be as direct, if you've got any doubt at all, ask them the question that would that would turn this upside down because you're not going to find it. And so when they do that and they talk to the people that are actually in the program that have been in the program for two, three and four years, uh, they come back and go, can we start today? They come after they part with the 7500, they, they say, can we start with the bottom line program immediately? No, they've got to they've got to show me that they get the results. They have to show me that they've generated sixty to seventy five thousand of year over year results. And the guarantee is, look, if you can't get it done in eight weeks, that's not a problem. I will work with you at my expense until you get a ten to one return. That's my promise to you. That's my commitment for accepting you into the program. So it's a reverse guarantee. I'm I'm literally going to work with them until they increase their revenue by that amount. And in the process, they're going to begin to realize through the lessons that the top line is not where they want to be focusing. I say the top yeah, line is line. the top line is vanity. The bottom line is sanity. <laughs> I like that. That's very good. Um, I love it. Okay. Uh, so you're going to give me a small discount if I pay the 7,500 upfront to 68, I think you said, right? right. So here's That's my right. credit card. Boom. Okay. Right. We get, cause what is the, can you just give us, what's the eight weeks include? What is video? What is it? We're so approaching? The very first, the very first week we go into um, the 80, 20 principle and, and the um, internal value of the fractal nature of 80, 20. So it's the 80, 20, and then the eight, the twenty percent of the twenty percent, and the twenty percent of the four percent, and show them what the value of that is, and then we analyze their existing customer base base to determine who the customers are in that in that section, and then I apply uh, these algorithms that I've developed to their existing customers and tell them based on longevity uh, of that client and where the current growth uh, model is and what their current yep. revenue model is 
if they're perform overperforming or underperforming or you know and what the latent value is if it's not and then we go in and we and we look at the time value of gross of gross margin in the business which i don't think i've ever seen anybody ever, ever talk about that and that is that gross margin is not the indicator of maximum value to a company it's gross margin divided by hours to deliver so it's gross margin per hour and when you when you front load the delivery of your work with the highest gross margin per hour first as premium vip clients you hit your break even for the month substantially earlier than if you intermix it with low value gross margin per dollar i you say that again please i want to how am i going to earlier in the month can you just repeat that just so that i and if i'm not totally so, picking it up i i, I want it for everybody else here it's real simple you do a job in the in the job so let's just say your break even for the day is $2,500. Yep. And you look at this job and go, man, I sold this at the highest. I mean, this, I've never gotten so much for this job. And I say, okay, so tell me about this job. Well, I sold the job for five grand and it's going to take me like a half a day to do it. I say, great. So there's four hours is the time to do this. What's your gross margin on that? And, and then they'll say, well, let's see my gross margin on that. My cost of goods is 60%. So that leaves me with $4,000. So it's $1,000 an hour. I go, great, $1,000 per hour is an amazing um, hourly rate. You should take that job. Where they get in trouble is where they sell a big job, say it's a $20,000 job, and it's gonna take them 40 hours to produce. So now all of a sudden you've tied up your available time. It's an opportunity cost question, right? The value of yeah. your time is infinite. So you want to make sure yep. that you that you maximize the value for that every hour that you've got and put it to the front of the month because the more you generate earlier in the month, the sooner you hit your break even. Then you can afford to move around the lower value time anytime that you want, and still now that that lower value time is even more valuable because you've covered all of your costs for the month. Now you've got yep. the overhead portion, even though it's a reduced gross margin that's dropping to the bottom line. When I did this in my own manufacturing business, we were really, really on top of our costing. And we were, we were using a standard cost accounting model that I learned in business school. And we were floating between 2% and 6% because it was such a commodity market that I was doing business in. When I switched to this model of gross margin per hour, within 60 days, our net profit had jumped to 25% and within, uh, Five months, we were between 25 and 33 percent for the month net profit, simply yeah. by looking at the timing of the jobs and positioning it and turning the higher value jobs quicker. Yep. So, Mark, if I could dummy this down for everybody listening, um, I want you to critique what I'm about to say and tell me how I'm doing. Okay. So, I'm a business coach, and I don't. We're not manufacturers, right? So, um, I go to a networking function. Um, no, there's two networking functions that I go to um, and I get X results. So I go there once a week. So over the course of the month, I go there um, eight times, right? Mm -hmm. So, but I, so I do that. Another, so Carl, explain to me your business activities. Well, I, that's what I do. And then the other thing that I do is I pick up the phone um, and my gal picks up the phone and we do this. We fill, I also fill local live events. So every two weeks, um, I put 20 people in a room um, and, I, and I do these presentations and then you say, okay, Carl, and what's your return on each of them? And we'll assume that when I go to the networking function, the two networking functions, my results are X, which are not going to be very impressive. And then when I do my local live event and I fill my own room and I control my own environment, what I said is very important for everybody listening. I control my own environment. When I go to a BNI event, they control the environment. When I, put together 20 people, I control the environment, it changes everything. But anyway, so when we do the math, we'll assume that I do three times as well, prof, but net, net, like in terms of like revenue and then return, because I gotta pay for the room when I do the uh, event and I gotta pay my gal to pick up the phone. But when you do my numbers, we work out that Carl, you've gotta take that two hours that you're spending at the networking function and just get an extra six people 
to your live event because you're making so much more money. Is that, did I do a good job of explaining to everybody what you're describing? It, it's kind of, but you're missing a really key point here. Is your time? No, you're missing the match to the ideal client profile. When you go to a BNI event, you don't know whether you're going to be talking to an insurance guy, a real estate guy, a manufacturer. Yeah. You don't know yeah. what, right? So you don't know what their profit models look like. When you specialize in a vertical niche, the niches, you know, the riches are in the niches, right? When you yep. focus on a niche, you know what their cost is. You know what the potential is. You know what the internal cost structure looks like. And once you get somebody in there, you can immediately go in and say, look, I don't like to cut costs, but if I see something that's radical and it's low hanging fruit, I'm gonna tell you to cut it free, right? But for the most part, I'm looking for where I can generate more gross margin dollars with little or no effort. And, and by being in specific niches, you radically improve your chances for that. Uh, the model that you're talking about, yes, absolutely what you're talking about, you're absolutely true, but you're driving it, again, from a top line perspective. You're looking at how much revenue I'm gonna get per client I'm not sure that in, in the way that I'm doing business right now, it would be much harder for me to tie in the guarantees and the risk reversal and all that kind of stuff on a non-qualified um, market. Non-ideal. Yeah. Like if it's not a manufacturer or printing company, you'd be nervous to do what it is that you're doing. Yeah. And I've, I've done this with lots of things. I did, I've done this with holistic wellness resorts and it works beautiful for that. I've done it with insurance companies. I've done it with, I haven't done it with lawyers or, you know, service businesses. I did it with a HVAC company. I've done it, you know, with a, a lot of different areas. So the fundamentals work, but the amount of homework that I've got to do to be effective and to be knowledgeable and not sound yep. salesy and scammy, it, it's just too high. Yeah, I got you. So once again, Mark, if I may, I just want to dummy it down for everybody listening to make sure they're hearing you clearly. If you were to be doing that, you'd fill your own room, but you'd put um, realtors, mortgage brokers, and financial planners, which are all effectively the same thing, right? Because yeah. like, you'd feel if that's what you niched, um, you'd put those people in the room as opposed to what's your baker candlestick maker, just so that you could feel more comfortable. That being said, agreed, Mark, we're, we're yeah, on the same page. Absolutely, but yeah. I want to also add on to that after you finish, um, how this leverages itself, how it's self-propagating. So anything Go else? There. Yeah, I want to hear that. I want to, uh, actually, um, yeah, no, I want you, you finish and then, uh, I guess, uh, yeah, let, let me hear what you're going to say, this self-propagating. So, I'm, really, I'm really glad that you mentioned the financial planners because the model that, that I do is driven by the principles of, of profit first. If you're not familiar with Mike McCallowitz's book, it, it's changing entrepreneurship forever. And so what my intention was, was focus on the, on the profitability and the cash flow of the business because that's the lubrication. That is the financial mass that moves the business. If you don't have uh, working capital and cash, um, you know, you're, you just can't get stuff done. So what's happened now is the suppliers to my clients and the accountants to my clients have seen a massive uptick in activity and they're calling me going, what are you doing? They're calling the client and they're saying, oh, we're in Mark's Catalyst program. And then they call me and go, what are you doing? And I, and I reply, I'm making your best customer. And they go, tell me more. And so <laughs> now, guess, what? guess yeah. what? Now I've created yeah. an affiliate JV network that benefits every single one of my clients and benefits every single one of their vendors that they're doing business with. Yeah. If I may, Mark, and I, once again, I want to dummy because again, I, I, I want to make sure everybody's this is this is liquid gold. What I'm hearing, um, as an example of that, Mark, you're a chiropractor, okay? As an example, any business you came to my local live event at the chamber because I'm, I'm newish and I haven't I haven't uh, niched yet, right? So what I'm doing is I'm putting ten business owners in the room. I work with you, um, and you're a chiropractor, and I say, look. I want, I, you don't have a scoreboard, Mark, 
So I'd like to, I'd like you to call your accountants and tell them, look, that you want to start getting some financial statements um, so that we can start working off some scoreboards to understand where we're doing, where we're going, and we can advance these scoreboards moving forward. Right. So all of a sudden, and then you say to the client, look, why don't we talk to your accountant together? You just built a relationship with the accountant. You set up a private conversation with the accountant and say, yeah, this is what I do with all my clients. I send them yeah. to their accountant. And I'm the accountant's dream because now you're spent. They're going to, this guy was spending $2,500 with you last year. He's probably going to spend 7,500 with you this year, but it's going to be the smartest thing he ever did because of all the different ways that we're both going to help him. Did I do a good job of self-propagating that? It's perfect, but you can take it one step further. In okay, working with the accountants, you say, look, I work with lots of chiropractors um, and they all need accountants. How about we work with my standard chart of accounts that I work with all my clients? Then you'll be working with every client in that space with the same standard chart of accounts. So it, returns, it reduces your internal uh, learning cycle and familiarity with new clients. And now you've got the yep. ability to benchmark everybody against the aggregate yep. in that space. So now all yep. of a sudden it's massive. And now the accountants are going, we know how to do the numbers, but we don't understand this marketing. We don't understand all these other things. I go, well, let's sit down and talk. And so now I'm working with a whole bunch of accountants and financial planners. I like it. Mark, uh, been virtual business coaching mastery is coming up. <laughs> You're about to get an email to present for us. Okay. Great job, dude. I love it. I love it. So if you're available, man, you're you're gonna be you're gonna be speaking to all our folks. Well, let's, if let's, that works for you, we'll cool see. What the, we'll see what the schedule looks like. I'm, I I do a lot of live events. That was up until COVID. Live events and podcasts were my single biggest source of of uh, leads because I would do specific podcasts and specific events in the industry. They videotape them, put them up on YouTube. And all of a sudden, I've got this constant flow of people coming in from the YouTube videos. Cool. So you you drive business with your podcast and YouTube, yeah? But I don't do it. My my the people I speak for do. So they're putting it up for for to add value to their event or to their software or to their podcast as part of their archives. But of course, it's got all my content information in there. And they start seeing me pop up all over the internet. So I'm everywhere where there's something that's going on. I love it. Smart man. Smart man. Okay, so I just want to make sure that I got this right. So your program is seventy five hundred. They've got to prove to you that they can add roughly seventy thousand dollars to their top line. Right. Um, once you and that is uh, oh that's here's the question. How is that delivered? Video, group, one to one. So it it's uh just like the business academy, it's it's weekly modules that they can do at their own uh, pace. They're in six minute to 12 minute segments that build on each other so they can go back and look at individual segments as many times as they want. They're done as PowerPoints with voiceover. And, um, and then there's a once a week open call, uh, group call, and it's open to all the alumni members also. So that's fantastic because the alumni members come back and, and talk about what they've learned and what they what their biggest challenges are and how they got through these issues. And what it does is it validates that the program absolutely works because these people come back month after month, week after week. There's regulars just like they are on, on you know the LPW uh, content. And the new guys, if they're questioning themselves or they're questioning the program, within two sessions, they know that it's not the program, it's them. And so they settle down real quick and get to it. And I make such a hard point of you got to prove yourself to me to even get into the yeah. program that, that yeah. now that the responsibility is on them to show that they can deliver. Cool. Okay. So the benefit, that's like it. Um, at, for the benefit of everybody listening, I want to hear. So now I just went through and I succeeded. We're at eight weeks close me how do you how, how do you get me on the phone how do you get in my office how do you close me and what do you close me with so, so during this period of time i will have learned a little bit about the business and i will say okay you know there's there are certain plateaus that we need to look for the first plateau is at a half a million the second pl plateau is at a million the third is at three million the fourth is at five million and the 
final one is at 10 million. So right now you're in the 790, 800 range. Um, we need to be focused on getting, getting you to the profitability portion where you're generating a minimum of 150 to $200,000 net profit above your owner's draw. So that's what, that's our first in step in the door. And um, so if they're in a position that the business is big enough to do that, then, then that's the entry level program. That's the $25,000 a year program. Um, if they're already at 2 million or, or 3 million in revenue, then they're going to become an entity to 35,000 um, a month or at uh, 50,000 a month, depending on the size of the business. Again, it's driven by an ROI multiple. And I will not sell them something that I don't think that they can hit. I've got to have absolute confidence in their ability to implement and the ability to hit that bottom line. And I think that it's that integrity and the proof with the existing alumni that, that the uh, results have been accomplished that, that moves them into coaching. Yeah. Okay, so I just want to just 101 math. I paid my 7,500 on a three payment plan. I hit eight weeks. I'm at 800 grand. Do you think I can get to a million? How much do you charge me? Well, if you want to go into coaching, the, the, the coaching program is going to be 25,000 uh, at the entry level, at that program level. And my expectation is, is that if you work with me at, in this level, that we're going to be generating uh, about $150,000 of net net profit for you above your owner's straw. And there's specific characteristics around the owner's straw that are based on if you as an owner stepped away from your business, how much would it cost to replace your function in that company with a competent qualified manager? And we can go to Indeed or, you know, any one of the online type marketplaces to find out what a, what a, a, COO would cost for a business that size. So that's what, we, that's what we determined the draw to be, owner's compensation, and then the net profit is is above that. So it's return on the business asset uh, and not on the job asset. Cool, I like it. All right, cool. But Pat, is there anything, um, just to, for everybody to take away for me what I think was cool, it's 7,500 to get going. They prove it to you that they're worthy of your coaching because you only take on so many clients. You're only willing to take on so many clients. You're only capable of taking on so many clients. So if they've achieved and they've shown you that they've got the capacity to put 70 grand to the, you know, the top line of their company, then you'll accept them into their, you'll potentially, uh, accept them into your coaching program, which is roughly 25 grand, which is two grand a month, guys. That's, that's kind of right. that program. Is that right? Okay, so Pat, anything, what did you think of that? Is that helpful? Oh, I just got, got off the floor where I was bowing to greatness. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well done. Yeah, very that's cool. Awesome. Now that's a clever model, man, clever model. I we'll really appreciate it. All right. That's really good. Cool. And you're, how many staff do you got, Mark? You're doing? Me. Big numbers, like 200 grand a month. How many staff do you got? Me. Just you, yourself, and I. I love yeah. it. So, folks. And so, here's, uh, here's another, here's another here concept go. that we can expand into on a future call. I've developed this concept that I call the law of inverse effort. The law of inverse effort. And what that yeah. says is that if I want to double my business, I can only work half as hard. And if I want to quadruple my business, I can only work one quarter as hard. And now on the surface, that that kind of makes sense that it's possible that if you really leaned out, you could do that. But a smart business owner would say, well, what happens if you want 100x your business? And I go, bingo. In order to do that, we have to apply profit leverage. And not only do we have to pry, apply profit leverage, we have to apply compound profit leverage. And this is the secret to getting massive amounts done with really small, thin, lean staffs. Yeah, let's so, talk about that. 
Yeah, like give, give us, can you give us a concrete example? Like give us an example of compound. Like where would you go with one well, of your manufacturing plants? And two of the things we've already talked about. Number one, who's your ideal client? You understand which niche you're in. You understand the cost of that niche. You understand it inside and out. So you can see right away, do this, do this, do this, do this, and you're going to be $5,000 a month more profitable. Boom, that fast. Because I can immediately pinpoint it. The second thing is, is, is applying the 80-20 principle aggressively. And once you understand how it works and the compound effort of 20% of the 20 and 20% of the four and 20% of the one, then you've got a pathway towards massive return on very, very small effort with a very, very small number of clients. Those are just two of 40 different profit levers that I've worked on. And this is why I was so excited about the profit acceleration software is you've got a lot of areas that are in there and most of those areas are not included in my profit levers, by the way. I love it. For everybody listening, I just, Mark, you, you tell me if you agree with this, but of everything that you've covered, what I want to no note that they're going to take plenty away. You should take plenty away, guys. Very, very clever model, the way that he sells it and whatnot. But, but Mark, your expertise um, is 80-20. But like, and, and guys, 80-20 is just a mental model. And I know that you've heard it, but I would dare say that if I spent one day with you, you're not living by it, not even close. Your business is not operating by, uh, you know, operating by it. And your coaching clients' as businesses are not coach, are not following it in any way, shape, or form. So Mark's superpower is to be able to understand 80-20, but you heard what he did. He went 80-20, and then he went 80-20 of 20, and then 80-20 of 20, and he goes so to, you know, deep so that roughly 1% is like 50% efficiency, 50% of revenue, like the 1%. The magic is recognizing, because we can all get that. The question for you guys, are you able to become good enough of a consultant slash coach slash advisor that you can pinpoint that 1% the way that Mark can? And, or would that, Mark, that I do a good job, would you agree with what I just said, and that, exactly. that your superpower? It's, it's exactly right. And, and to do the exact math, that... 20% of the top eight tenths of 1% is 51%. So you are dead on. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's knowing, how, knowing where the numbers are and how the numbers flow. If you, if you look at money as motion, it only works when it's flowing. So you got to figure out where it flows and where it resides and where the potential lives. And this is exciting stuff. And it's, it's really great to have a smart group of people to share this with. Instead of yeah. business owners that are that are working, so hard. <laughs> I no. know. And even for everybody listening, like Pat and I, like Pat and I get together multiple times per week. I mean, well, many times per week. But part of we have we have scheduled time. We actually call it Remarkable Hour. I and mean, Big Al comes with us, by the way. But what we do is we just look at the existing. One of the one of the challenges that we have is that Pat and I will talk again, and you guys probably heard us talk about it different times, but we call it idea sex. And it's like, he comes up with an idea and then I come up with an idea and then we both go, oh my gosh, did you, did you just think of that too? Like, can you believe it? And it's this huge, awesome, and if we ever accomplish what we just talked about, we're gonna change the freaking world together, right? Well, problem is that doesn't always come off, right? No doubt you guys get it. Like we're getting like two arms and two legs and a certain amount of staff. And you know, we got three software engineers who are already piled up. But what, what I'm getting at is that Pat will come up with things that we're just like, oh my gosh, this is so good. And I'll reg it with some with consistency. I'll say to him, Pat, how do we get 80% of the value of what you're showing me with 20% of the effort so that we can get, because again, it, and it just comes back to what I'm, what I'm trying to impress upon you with what I just said is that we're living off of 80, 20. And it's like, that's where we go, right? Like, that's amazing. But how could we get 80% of the value of what you just said with 20% of it? And if I gave you guys another example, like I, I think I'm going to send out an email. I think it's tomorrow or the next day. I got to finish it up. But what I'm going to talk about, like with COVID, locking people indoors and all that sort of stuff, no doubt you probably agree that maybe when it was all said and done, that might have been a little bit of overkill. And it maybe didn't. You've got your opinion and I'm good with whatever your opinion is, right? But what we could have done, the, the lock, if you look at the lockdowns in the economies and the places that it was done and the number of COVID um, diagnoses and deaths, 
I think you will very quickly work out that the lockdowns didn't quote unquote work the way that they were supposed to, right? Well, if we would have done 20% of the quote, like if we would have done 20% of the precautions, so that would be face masks, that would be social distancing, that would be no large gatherings, we would have been able to get 80% of the value, right? But we wouldn't have had the world shut down kind of thing and all the, the mental health and the challenges on the other side of that and grandma and grandpa not seeing anybody for X amount of time. Like you could have got 80% of the value with 20% of the effort, in my opinion. I don't want you to take my opinion, use your own mental model, go do your own homework and then come up with what you decide. What I'm trying to impress upon you here or show you is the way that Mark does it. He goes 80, 20, 80, 20, 80, 20, 80, 20. He takes one and it represents 51%. Um, Pat and I are doing that on a regular basis and we're doing it with the software that you guys are staring at right now. And that's how we do it. Pat, how do we get 80% of the value at 20% of the effort? With that said, are you doing that throughout your day when you go to the events? Like if there's, like when you go to your events, how do you get 80% of the value with 20% of the effort? How do you get 80% of the clients with 20% of the meetings instead of all the meetings? Um, you know, just, just thinking those things through. Uh, Mark, with what I just said, would you expand upon anything there with, with your expertise around 80-20? Do you like, do you agree, I, comment? I, I think that, that what you said is great. And, it, and that's exactly where I started. And I tend to be a crazy iterative thinker. That's the way my mind works. It's like I, I come up with an idea and I'll say, okay, why is that important? And then I'll figure out what's important and I'll ask myself again, why is that important? So it spins and spins. I look at COVID as the single greatest lifetime opportunity that we will ever have because it leveled the playing field for virtually everybody. And all these people at home, the people that are freaking out and, you know, worried about everything, that's, they live in the 80%. The people that were at home and said, for the first time in my life, I'm not buried putting fires out. I, for the first time in my life, I can think. For the first time in my life, I consider my business at a different level. Those are the guys that came out of the gate and just blew the doors off. And this is where I live. Yeah. You guys, and that again, you talk about just with that mindset that COVID is the greatest opportunity. Let's face it, 90% uh, of the planet is not looking at the world that way. So it's, it's all mindset. It's all mindset. Hey, Pat, can I ask you, is there anything that you'd expand upon there on the 80 20 or anything else? Well, I was thinking about the opportunity that Mark was just talking about and how it affects uh, people differently. And if they come in with, like these horse blinders on, they see the world in a certain way. They don't think of other opportunities. They can't see what opportunities exist. And so they just shut down their business and they say, I'm done. But yeah. if they have the opportunity to hang out with a group like we are, and they start um, picking the brains of people who are operating in different regions around the world, different industries, they start to see more and more opportunities that if they took advantage of them, um, that they would skyrocket their business past all their competitors who close their doors as well. <clears throat> so I think there's great opportunity, like in certain industries, like, man, I wish I had invested in Zoom or something, you know, a year and a half ago, I just wasn't thinking. I wasn't thinking like, what happens when the world shuts down? What should I invest in when people are all indoors? You would think, okay, whatever, you know, whatever those answers are, Zoom being one of them. Um, <clears throat> But we have to live, I just kind of see this as we have to open our eyes. And, and I think even for some of us who are approaching, let's, I hate to say the end of my career because I've still got three or four decades to go, but um, I'm well into it, let's say. And I think, Carl, you'd mentioned something that we have to apply the same intellectual rigor in our 50s and 60s as we, do, as we did when we were first starting out, we were going after it. Like this yep. is not a this is not a, a small box of knowledge we're trying to to master here and to teach others. It's continually growing, and I just find this uh, conversation with Mark, like you said, it's liquid gold. I think you know each one of us should be going back to the recording on this and listening again and taking some notes because there's so much we can learn, and this is just for me as like a master class in 
I'm going to say, first of all, humility, because I realize, oh my gosh, I got so much to learn. There's so many models we can consider, so many ways we can help our coaches grow and do better. And um, we have to have these kind of conversations more and more often, I think. I love it. I agree. And actually, uh, Mark, if I can, I think um, we've got a question here for you. I'm going to open up. Let's have a look here. Self muted. Who's got a question? Dave, you're self muted, my friend. Hey, Carol. There we go. Hey, hey, Dave, what, you got a question for Mark? Yeah, I got a great uh, session, Mark. Perfect. Uh, my question is, uh, you, you kind of explained how you collect the 75K or 68 if they pay up front. How do you do 25K? So I don't, I don't normally do that up front. I normally do it in three month sessions until, okay. they, until they can accelerate their cash flow to the point where it's not an issue. So, you know, Carl talks about this um, in different options. You can, you can structure it with a low front end that bills towards a high front end on the back. You know, the, the experience that I've had in doing uh, business coaching for over 10 years now is that the only two reasons that a business owner will fail are number one, they don't believe that the program will work and we've proven that it does. Number two, they don't believe that they can make it work. I've had people come up and say, you know, I'm not smart like you. I'm just a guy. I'm just a welder. I'm just this. I'm just that. I go, no, you're not. You know, and I start talking about all the assets that they have that they don't consider for themselves. So by giving them a low barrier of entry on the front end, um, that gets the result. And my, and again, I tell them, I said, listen, if I accept you as a client, there's only four reasons that we will ever stop doing business together. Only four. Cash flow is not one of them. Those four reasons are I die, you die, you sell your business, or you reach a point at which you are using the business as a passive growth model and don't want to grow it anymore. Those are the only four reasons that we disengage. So I am making a lifetime commitment to you for as long as I live and as long as I'm doing this business to stick by you and deliver the results that I'm promising you. And because I'm doing an ROI based model based on historical performance, I always exceed those ROI models. And that that's where the confidence and the trust comes in is because you do what you say you're going to do. And so many businesses today don't do that. Okay. Is a one Oh one though, Mark, I want to hear. So in day one, you accept me into that program. What do you hit my credit for credit card for off the 25 grand? It's probably going to be typically it's probably going to be six grand. Six. Some, somewhere, yeah, between, might, somewhere between what, six. Okay. And, so let's assume it's six. When and how much is payment number two? I don't do it. On that what? Way. And then how are you coming to that number? I don't do it that way. Usually what I do is I say, listen, if cash flow is an issue, let's figure this out to do it over six months. And then we'll come up with a, with an agreement between us where they're, where they're comfortable and I'm comfortable. If I don't think they're going to do it, I'm not going to offer them the program. And again, they will have had to have proven that they can generate the cash flow coming out of the accelerator program. That's going to give them the first three months payment. They will have generated it on their own. And I tell them that's the purpose of Accelerator is to show you that it works and to generate the cash flow so that it doesn't create a burden for you. So have you ever fired anyone after the Accelerator program and they buy into the other coaching I've never, session? I've, I've, never accepted, doing I've never accepted anybody into coaching and had to fire them. I've, I've had good. a number of clients that wanted to get into coaching, but I didn't accept them. Right. Okay. Yeah, you can kind of, you're right. You'd know after three months for sure. Yeah, Okay. the, the dead giveaway for me is if, if I ask them, what's keeping you from achieving your results? And they say, I got the wrong customers. I got the wrong, uh, wrong employees. Like, you know, they're blaming somebody. Yeah. If they're not taking 100% of the responsibility for themselves, I know we got problems right from the get go. Yeah, exactly. Been there, done that. Thank you very I'm much. Mark. Awesome. Cool, David. You, you got some. What are you going to do, Dave? What's your run rate for this month? What, I'm sorry. What's your run rate for this? What are you going to like this month I'm with your? 
54 this month. I've had a good month. 40, how, how much? 54. Nice. Oh, 54, I got you. Okay, well, you got 200, man. We got 150 to go. <laughs> I know, I know. I just hear back to Nah, that's cool. No, nah, Davey, doing great, man. Appreciate you, buddy. Let me check you back on mute. So, uh, so just that I, I want to make sure, Mark, everybody's taking this away. So, with the client, there's like if you with twenty five grand over six, that's like four grand a month, roughly. Uh, are you are you basically breaking it down roughly four grand a month after you get my initial six? It depends on how fast they're scaling. You know, there's a lot of times where we'll we'll see that I had one client, for instance. They had, a, they had a client that had huge upside potential. So I showed them how to package their offer for that client. And the client came back with a $200,000 offer, a $200,000 engagement. So they generated 50% gross margin on a $200,000 order that they never would have thought that they could do. They wrote a check for the whole amount there, right there. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, and I would, and if I may, Mark, but you have a decade of experience. For everybody else listening, I, I want to encourage them to get their fees locked in. Like again, that's where we normally go, like nineteen ninety seven a month. It's twenty four, you know, roughly twenty four grand a year, and it's just it's palatable for all concerned. But as you become more, you know, more experienced guys, and you feel more and more comfortable that that money is going to hit bank accounts. Um, just no doubt you'd agree, Mark, we don't want our guys running around with loosey goosey no. agreements where they get six grand up front, do work for four months and then don't get paid. And there's always, there's a story instead of their, their money. Right? So one of, the, one of the things that you can do to build your confidence around that, and this worked well for me, is that when I found that there was resistance and pushback, you know, if you look at a conversation and they say, how much? And you say 25 and they go, uh, do you have a monthly program? And they're pushing back. And then they say, how about 10 and 10? And they say, well, no, how about this and this? That's a combative experience. You're pushing forward. So what I want to do is I want to strive for a collaborative conversation instead of a combative conversation. And that's basically that's focusing on what are you trying to achieve here? And then we, we come up with something that's going to work for both of us. And for people that are, that are doubtful about themselves and doubtful about the program, I go, let's take this in three month increments. Let's do eight, you know, eight grand. Oh, look at that. That eight grand is almost the same as the 7,500 for the eight weeks. You think that was a coincidence? Mm, I think not. Right. So this is like mm -hmm. they can do three month increments. And when they start seeing after one or two of these, then they, then they <laughs> say, I want to be in. I'm all in. Because they know at any given point that I reach saturation, they're out, right? They could be out yep. if they're not if they're not delivering what they say they're going to do. But in reality, I haven't had this happen. Um, I really, I really haven't. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, but but in for the interest, Mark, not from, just for everybody listening, guys, what Mark just described, Profit Accelerate. If you just hit the ROI tab on Profit Acceleration oh, software. That does that to a large degree where it's like, look, we just found you $250,000. Surely if everything goes wrong and I suck, you suck, uh, your kid who works for you sucks and everybody drops the ball, surely we can find a way to put $48,000 in your bank account. Would you agree? Do you know what I mean? Like that sort of a framework. It's yep. money at a discount always. And we've got the contingencies built in, et cetera. So just as a, just again, Mark, make sure we, I don't want to confuse anybody either. So, um, but no, that's the, cool. This, I mean, profit acceleration software is 90%. I'm, I'm serious, 90% of the battle. When you can show people green bars, <laughs> and it's their words that tell you 3%, 2%, 5%, um, and, the, and the fact that you're knocking back, I think we could do 15%. You say, no, we're not going to do more than five. When you knock it back like that, you diminish their optimistic outcome, you're, you're showing your expertise based on what you've experienced or what you know to be true. That adds to your credibility, that adds to your expertise and, your, and the trust. And I, I continually say, you might be able to get 15, but you know what, I'm gonna put five in here until you can show me. And boom, once again, it's on their shoulders. I'm here to guide you, I'm here to, I'm here to help you on your journey, and I want you to get the most possible thing that we can. There's nothing that says that we have to be stuck at 5%.
we can go to 15 if you can handle it. We want to do it in a, in a reasonable, prudent way that doesn't blow things up. Yeah. But you just said something very important that people don't understand. The businesses fall over as much from growth and success as they do from failure and, and lack thereof. But that's your experience, I would bet, Mark, correct? Absolutely. I mean, the basic concept of statistical process control, if you've ever had any kind of quality training or anything else, is you have an upper limit and a lower limit that you need to be operating into. If you blow out of either one of those ranges, you're going to have big trouble. And so I know what those ranges are. Profit acceleration software will keep you in those ranges, stay built into them, and just say, look, you don't want to go beyond that because it upsets the balance within the company and it creates big problems and we don't want problems. We want to reduce the friction. We don't want to add to it. I love it. Mark, we didn't plan that. I'm glad I opened you up. And that was like a that was impressive. Awesome. Okay, Mark. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate your time. Well done. And for everybody here, we appreciate you guys showing up. Hopefully that was helpful. We didn't plan on spending the entire hour there, but uh, that's the way she goes sometimes. So we'll see you guys next uh, a couple days time. We'll see you on Thursday, same time, same place. Uh, Pat, before we exit, any words of wisdom? Uh, no, I'm just, I love this conversation today. And <clears throat> thanks a lot again, awesome. Mark, for uh, your input today. I really appreciate it. Awesome. All right. Okay, Pat, we appreciate you, buddy. Everybody here, we appreciate you guys, and we'll see you in a couple of days. Adios.